pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please remain standing for a moment of silence for the sick, handicapped, departed, and the military personnel of this community. Thank you very much. Um, before we get to our, our visitor list, I'd like to uh, introduce our state representative, uh, Jason Martino. Thank you. Um, just one note, and then I'll get to the real reason why I'm here today. At 6 o'clock tomorrow night, I'm going to be hosting a teletown hall. So if you get a phone call to your house at 6, probably me. If you need call-in information, you can go to my website or my Facebook page. You can even log in, too, and ask questions. So just wanted to get that out of the way, just so people off. On the on, if you have call ID, it'll come up, say Representative Jason. All right, now the real reason why I'm here tonight. Um, I apologize for not being here last month. We were finishing up the budget in Harrisburg. Uh, we got held over, of course, but not nine months late last year. So that is done. Budget's finalized. So here I am. But tonight I'm here to present a condolence resolution uh, for Mr. Colusi, who passed away at the age of 75 on May 27, 2016. The son of late Herman and Viola Colusi, Mr. Colusi was a former truck driver and owner of H. Colusi Garage. Lauded for his dedication and commitment to his community, he was a two-term member of the Bridgeville Borough Council and helped to preserve Baldwin Street. In addition, he was an honorary member of the Blue Knights and a member of the Library Sportsman's Club, and he established the Bridgeville Youth Football League in 1975. Mr. Colusi represented many things to many people, among them a dedicated father, grandfather, and friend, and his loss will be deeply felt by all those who have the honor of knowing and loving him. Now that the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania proclaim with enduring sorrow the passing of Mr. Colusi and extend heartfelt condolences to his son Jeffrey, Gregory, his daughter Allison, six grandchildren, and many other family members and friends. And I'd like to present his family with a copy of this resolution. Of the House of Representatives. Thank you. This is really nice. Well, good evening. Thank you, Representative O'Park, for introducing me and giving me this award. My name is Allison Holler and Bill Colusi was my father. Embarrassingly, some of you may remember me from the Porta John incident <laughs> during the Rock Creek concert over Father's Day weekend. I found my phone. <laughs> In 2007, when my dad told me that he was running for council, I laughed at him. I was like, are you crazy? What do you want to do this for? And he was convinced that the people of this town needed him and that he could make a difference. And now I think he was right. One of my forever memories is of when I helped him work the polls in 2013. I got to see firsthand the people that came out to talk to him and laugh with him and to vote for him. So on behalf of the family of William Colusi, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our representative for coming out and delivering this award personally, and to your mayor, Mr. Blasio, and your borough manager, Lori, and all the employees of the borough and the council, the fire department, the police department, and the Public Works for nominating him for this award, for coming to the funeral home with all of your gifts, food, flowers, condolences, the newspaper articles, and for generously donating the use of the social hall for his wake, and most of all, for putting up with him. <laughs> so, Dad, I hope you're looking down right now and smiling. Thank you all for being here tonight, and thanks for this award.
Council would like to call the commands to go up. side of the street there are four meters on the side of the post office and then there's the post office alleyway and that next building is 304 Hickman. Our office, the parking authority's office, is actually in that building along with the dentist's office. That's where directly in front of that building is where we would like to put two meters. Um, on the right side of the street by the yoga studio there are presently three meters and then there's the um, alleyway that takes you back to Bridgeville Alliance, and then there's one meter. The whole rest of Hickman, there are no meters on either side of the street because they're in front of houses um, in that regard. Now, when you come to the parking authority or the dentist's office, that office that we rent has a parking lot, so that when we go to our office, it's, it's actually for you to come to our office and park in that lot, but we would like to put two meters directly in front of, of that office. So that would be our request. No, we have been discussing okay. that at, at, at great length. Because we have to do the ordinance. Well, so actually, yeah, we were supposed to do this two or three months ago. Joe saw yes, our our worker, as, and then we kept forgetting to bring it up to approve it at our meeting. So he's anxiously no. awaiting these two meters to be in front of his building there. But no, at this time, just no. a thought since we're going. Yeah, forward. no, no, we're we're pretty clear, and we would not be putting any more meters the rest of the way down because they are in front of residential. Houses there. In the solicitor's concept of anything else, if you recall, approximately a month or two months ago, um, we came and requested the removal of one of the meters and the machine um, that was interfering and was causing difficulty with the expansion of the ground that you were trying to get. And so you may want to. That was, yes, that was discussed at the meeting at this step for several times at this point. We haven't done anything with that actually in the press that I recall. I would even look at the minutes. I really don't remember. I know that he came to the meeting and asked about it and we looked into it, but I don't remember. I don't think he came to the parking authority. He no. He didn't come to the parking authority. Yes, he didn't come to the parking authority, and then I know that we were looking into it to decide whether we wanted to open that actual can of worms right. because if you remove a meter in front of one person's house there that sets a precedent that just gives the domino effect um, because on that part of Shady all of those homes there on the one side of the street the American Legion side of the street they all have meters on that side so I know that was a, a big issue whether we wanted to open up that can of worms in that regard I believe it was the house two houses up from the Who has a kids, the I want to say it's two houses up from the house. Thank you. Um, yeah, hot please. I'm Dan Huff and uh, with the Lions Club, uh, particularly the district, and uh, I've also been a member of the Lions Club downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, what I'm here for is that we are uh, starting a uh, Lions Club in the greater Bridgeville area. Uh, it has been probably forever. <laughs> Mark Nagy had one, Upper St. Clair had one, but there hasn't been one serving now the community from the Parkway all the way down to Washington County. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about the Lions Clubs, Lions Clubs are about 100 years old now. we will start 100 years ago, starting next year. We serve 1.4, uh, we have 1.4 million members, uh, and uh, we're in 210 countries. More significantly, we have 34 Lions Clubs throughout the greater Pittsburgh area in the surrounding 
suburbs as well as downtown. Uh, what Lions Clubs do? Well, for one, uh, they serve uh, sight, uh, helping people with vision issues, helping prevent preventable blindness. Uh, that was asked of us in 1925 by Helen Kelly. Uh, and to become the Knights of Vision. And we've certainly done that with all kinds of research, with all kinds of funding. I, over the past five years, have had numerous calls from people who can't afford their glasses. Uh, our club and the clubs in those areas, and in fact, I've gotten many calls from the Bridgeville area, when we help people get their glasses taken care of. Uh, whether it be hearing aids, whether it be disasters, in fact, there are four major areas that Lions Clubs have been focusing on. One is hunger. The other is youth, another is conservation, and then sight. Uh, and Lions Clubs, when they're in a community, they're there to serve. Basically, where there is a need, there is a line. It's what we said. We haven't got one here. And, and it's kind of bad. I mean, a few years ago, when that flood hit, and there was so much devastation, if a Lions Club had been here, the next day, 24 hours later, $10,000 would have been here to help those who were displaced. There would have been lions from all around coming in, there were a few anyhow, coming in to help clean up some of the property. Uh, and there, there are a number of things, whether it's being helping the historical society, whether it be helping the, the Chartiers area, uh, and uh, uh, with PAA, with the Athletic Association. Lions are there to help with money uh, and uh, with person power. The problem is, lions have been getting older and older, and they're not very much person power anymore. So what we're able to do so far, we've got about five sign-ups so far in the Bridgeville area, several of them younger people than me significantly, which is great. Uh, and uh, we are looking, and that basically what I'm asking for here is for people to sign up. Help us start a chapter. Uh, the Lions uh, will really deal with probably Collier Township uh, uh, and, and Bridgeville, maybe even South Bay, and probably Scott, Scott. And part of the reason is serve the schools. So the Chartiers Valley District will also be served. We're talking to the superintendent and assistant superintendents over there. But we can establish Leo clubs, teaching kids how to serve and why it says an important part of being a citizen in this country is to be there to serve the needy. So we're here to help everything from whether it's building ramps uh, for the handicapped and uh, for wheelchair bound people uh, or whether it's helping people fix their roof. Uh, we, get, we get a lot of help from some of the, uh, the box stores around here and the hardwares around here to, to, to donate things to help out. Uh, so we have one very good member over here who has signed up, and Lori has signed up, and we, we're talking to the chief. Uh, he's on vacation, so we're giving him some time before we hassle him some more. But we'd love to have a representation from the police force. We'd love to have some rep representation from the council. Uh, and we certainly want you to know what's going on. Uh, I, I think that every community, we're starting one up in Carnegie as well, uh, every community needs to have a chance where people can volunteer and besides that get money. Millions and millions of dollars are donated every year by Lions International. All we have to do as Lions in the area is come up with some matching funds and anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 can come to the community. So there are sources of funds that can help this community a lot, as well as people who want to do these things. And I know how busy people's schedules are. I know what mine's like. But when you can take a little time and help out, whether it's helping somebody see, whether it's doing vision screens and watching kids all of a sudden get better in school because they're able to have somebody detect that right away, uh, feelings are great. So that's what we're asking for. I've got materials I can leave behind uh, and pass around. I'll make sure that there's some sitting out here and uh, I'll pass a few around with my contact information. But before I end, are there any questions? Some people are on our website. Do you have electronic versions of this? Yes, we do. Can you give us, what is that? How do we contact you? Let me just hand you this for right now. And and then I'll get some more to folks in the audience. Um, we've got some color copies and not so color copies. Uh, there may be a few other things in there. I'm sure. Okay, here's one. Pass that around. That would be great. And I've got some more brochures that I'll set around. So, 
And there's the site, lionsclubs.org, uh, uh, that you can really learn more about lions in general. Uh, but my number is on that handout that's coming around, and I'm going to leave some of my business cards. Uh, feel free to call me. Uh, we're, when we're calling on businesses, we're probably going to hit about 30% of them in the area so far. And we'll be continuing to call on people, but we've probably got, we've got five sign-ups right now. Uh, and we'll have, well, there are about seven more people who are seriously considering it. Uh, and then we've got myself and my wife who are transferring our membership as well as a couple other people. So we're probably right now at about 10. So we're halfway to the 20, but when we get 30, that's, that's more people who can serve this community. Right. right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, initially, I signed that too. That's the first thing. I want to say something about the Lions Club, actually. A personal story. Um, I was born with a congenitive condition called Coast Disease, uh, which is basically a detached left brain. So I lost my left eye as a baby. And, uh, the only reason I wasn't a pirate baby was an eye patch was because the Lions Club paid for the surgery and prosthesis. I knew mean, uh, up until my parents who had uh, health insurance when I was a teenager. So uh, I'm, I'm forever thankful to the Lions for the gift of my family. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had no idea. I just want you to know that uh, it really did have a profound effect on my family. Thank you. Um, so, Planning Commission. Yeah, I submitted my name for the Planning Commission. I think it's an exciting opportunity to serve. Uh, I think it'd be very interesting, it might be a little bit of fun. Uh, but, you know, I'm a resident. I, I, I want to see the vision the council's laid out, the planning commission's laid out, <laughs> be implemented. Uh, good things are happening. Uh, we're fixing, we're attempting to fix some traffic problems on the southern side of the town. So maybe, you know, it can be out from work in a reasonable amount of time or not. Wait at the exit on 79 forever and ever. That's great. Good stuff to happen. A couple months ago, I was at the Planning Commission meeting and they showed a uh, development proposal for uh, Lower Bridgeville, uh, particularly, uh, I'm sorry, Baldwin Street. Sorry. And, uh, you know, it included a lot of green space on the side where we have a lot of burnt out vacant properties, boarded up properties, and flood mitigation. And, developing the other side. Um, to do that, you need to do a lot of things. You know, you can mitigate flooding issues. you got to improve traffic to get there to make people want to help there. So it leads to hopefully another vision we have, which is a green traffic flow from the northern side of town to Bower Hill, eventually. So people can get there. And I, so I can maybe go to Giant Eagle or Home Depot and make that right turn to get home a mile and a quarter that's a vision I think a lot of people in town have. And I think it's important for council to appoint someone who shares those kinds of visions. So, I'm willing to work to do that. You know, I hope we don't appoint someone just because, you know, the body buddy system or someone's last name. But we appoint someone who shares this kind of vision for the future visual. So that's, that's all I really have to say. But, uh, <coughs> No matter what, I'm two good candidates, I think, so that's the one. Mr. Paul Fryer. Thanks. So the, uh, the comments tonight about building police and performance that you just made uh, makes me think about uh, the pride check because we should take it in the community and put you there. Uh, I'm sure uh, many of you are fully aware that uh, uh, you know, this town is built uh, by hunters and primary trappers and uh, uh, lumbermen. Uh, and then after that, he wrote the sea workers uh, in, in state and county hospital employees. And uh, out of nothing, they created a typical American blue collar community. And after uh, 200 years of us evaluating, uh, large cities and small towns, uh, 
as to which type of communities are the best and which stories for children and the family in communities like this. Just that uh, carry on with the, uh, the characteristics of American society. But based on the two speakers or two speakers, I just sort of But anyway, relative to that, uh, communities, uh, uh, communities that are, are affluent and wealthy can provide uh, their families and kids with things that people in communities that aren't wealthy can. And uh, there's two ways a community can become affluent and wealthy. You can either have several thousands of families with uh, $100,000 incomes, or you can have an expanding, successful business system that produces enormous uh, tax revenues that will provide everybody in the town or all the things that they'd like to have and, and more. I just want to, this is uh, something you've seen many times. This is the improvement that we, uh, we assume it's going to be made from the original post office to the new bridge. This is a, sort of a concept of the conceptual drawing of the seven lane bridge and the four lane road going through there. And I think that I, uh, I, I made some approaches to kind of thought to you about last month by putting the left turn stacking lane in here. So for the cars are going to turn up on the Chartier Street. So every time a car turns left there, it doesn't tie up everybody who's trying to get out of the bridge with evacuating the traffic. Excuse me. Uh, one thing I wanted uh, you guys to understand, however, the, the seven-lane bridge, these two lanes that are moving from Bridgeville south, um, don't assume that those are two free-moving lanes. One of them is given the option of going straight from Bridgeville to South Ed, but also turning right onto New Route 50. So we're limited uh, to that extent. Uh, more than would like to be, but I don't think we have any other choice. But the other thing, I just wanted to you to mention the importance of uh, the, this improvement. I hope you're all passionate and uh, unreasonable about taking it into the lesson. And the other thing I want to mention is, excuse me, um, I, I don't have to go through this. This is, I attempt to be, this is, Meeting, but the bridge is right here. This is the Bethany Church, that's the drugstore on the right, and with the left turn stacking lane of considerable importance to them. This is the gateway to the bridge of the business district, and it's going to create an image for the community if we do it right. And uh, I, I think on the last one I gave you, I tried, uh, I suggested putting the trees and the sidewalks, but our councilman, or I'm sorry, our engineer Joe mentioned. That's very difficult because there's so many underground conduits and uh, pipes underneath the sidewalk. So <clears throat> what I did was <clears throat> I created the same illusion of the new traditional street lights, the same type we have in the other part of the, in the central part of the business district. But I moved the trees three or four feet uh, inside the uh, uh, sidewalk. This would require the cooperation and approval, obviously, from the from the church, the post office, and some of the other people there. And the final thing. Now, this is a this is an overhead view of uh, the central business district again, the Bethany Church, the dark store, the post office. Excuse me. And, uh, this is a more detailed drawing of the, the areas in the green show all of the green grass that exists on both sides of the street. Excuse me. And uh, if we could, with the cooperation of the people along the street, we could have a spectacular uh, looking entrance to the community, especially with by uplighting the uh, trees, which is very dramatic with doing it. And finally You said finally already. <laughs> I didn't hear you. You said finally already. But this is the second one. <laughs> and uh, actual finally, this is a uh, this is a, a way of uplighting the trees. These are just some of the examples of the way they did it uh, in other communities. But 
there's a very intuitive way of doing it. Well, Here's a game. If they're on private property, they do that. Please don't go private property. Yeah, they do that. I'll, I'll, I'll argue about that later. I forgot what to show you is if, uh, if you do decide to put in those traditional street lights by just putting uh, an electrical outlet somewhere near a tree that could be planted on the drugstore's property and the, the church's property, so you are allowed to off like them. But by, the way they used to do this, they used to bury these in the ground. And as the trees grew, they became inconvenient. So the root system went up through the trees. But doing it like, like this, it's much cheaper, it's flexible, it's stable in the ground. And I just wanted to see uh, that idea. And I hope you pursue this with energy. Thank you, Bob. No. <coughs> First of all, thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I want to thank you for the Hawaiian. That's uh, I promise you I'll sign it, but I don't want any more and I don't want nothing black. I got too many. <laughs> Please. From 32 year old up to yesterday I belong to every organization that exists. And I don't just warm up the chair, that's my problem. But I, I'm a worker, okay? But I don't need no more black, I don't need more room at home. I'll join that. Okay. It's a problem. Actually, it's a good, good thing to do. As you people all know, that I've been uh, from junior chamber to chamber, to concert, to library, and, and quiet, and, and so that's why I say, I don't even know what to write. Talking about planning <coughs> commission, I have a commission there. Planning commission is not just what you see now. It's what I have in my mind for the last 40 some years, which the former, the many planning commission working on many times. <clears throat> my idea of planning commission is to work on a comprehensive plan, which I know all about it. Obviously, I've been in council for 30 some years. <coughs> so we come very much for a million. Not only to meet again in the uh, and it can make a commission if you nominate me to, to be a terrorism if you will. No, I work well with the, with the board. I work with all of you. I work with the board of the years to go in council, and we work very well. Only I want to say, academic, we don't talk about that. I'm only third grade, and well, love the more than that. Experience. Very, 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 very educated. If you want to appoint me, I'll be more glad to serve, like I served for all these years. It would be to make my my daughter. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Yes, All right. We will go on to our minutes. Uh, motion of the borough council regarding the minutes of June 13, 2016, regular minutes as submitted. First, Jerry and Jerry. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Jerry. Uh, motion of the borough council regarding the minutes of July 11, 2016, regular meetings as submitted. Bruce Gallagher and Jerry. All those in favor? All those opposed? Push uh, Second point application, Holy Child Parish, 212 Station Street. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding the site plan application submitted on behalf of the Holy Child Parish by Hayes Design Group for the property located at uh, 212 Station Street. The property is located in the R2 Zoning District. Plan proposes an addition to the existing school for a conversion of the building into Parish Light Center. The purpose of the addition is to add an elevator and restroom to the building to improve accessibility. The structure is currently non-conforming with the addition of a continuation of the non-conforming. Uh, the plan has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites, and the planning commission is now in order for the consideration of the council. I see some drawings earlier in the line. Sure. I saw them. I yeah. sent 
church drawings. <laughs> sure. I hate you to bring them all here. That's fine. Um, my name is Tim Reedy. I'm uh, an architect with the Hayes Design Group. I've been helping the uh, Holy Child Parish for the last three years develop some uh, some schemes to develop their property. Um, it began last year with the demolition of their former rectory building. Um, if any of you are familiar, they had a small residential structure between their church and the, the former Holy Child School. That was demolished to prepare the way for um, what's to be a, a pretty small but tall addition with the elevator um, and some new restrooms onto their existing school. Um, they currently use the school exactly as they're intending to use it in the future as a parish life center. Um, they use it for faith formation or CCD classes as well as for banquets and other parish functions. That's exactly what they want to keep using it for, um, but the elevator and the new restrooms and other renovations to the project will help it um, be accessible and will uh, kind of bring it up to modern standards for uh, plumbing fixtures, lighting, uh, new finishes and everything to make it feel more like a, a parish place there. Um, the plans also call on future phases for development of that former rectory building space here into um, the courtyard. It is not part of this current phase of construction that we're seeking approval for um, because the parish uh, is still in the fundraising process during the capital campaign. Um, but this gives you an idea of what the desired goal is over the long term. Great. Thank you very much. All right, there's a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Chris Gonnucci and Joe Lasso. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, proposed ordinance number 991 from Blackman Line Road Parking. A motion from Borough Council authorizing the manager Collins to advertise proposed ordinance number 991 in warrants of the official borough. Many of the borough official code of ordinances of motor vehicles and traffic part four. General Parking Regulations 15-402. Parking prohibited at all times in certain locations, specifically to prohibit parking in certain locations on the block and on the road. Um, and we're going to have a power to the property for the road. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number two and final 2016 final maintenance program uh, contract A. The uh, motion of the borough council regarding the renewal of current estimates number two and final 2016 maintenance program to Alex and Paris in the amount of $7,006.14 for work completed today. Uh, the, estimates, the estimate has been reviewed by the mayor's sites. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, contractor A or anti contracting, 10% bid bond, $109,430. Uh, please clear contract A and bid bond, for bid, uh, bid bond A, 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 bid bid bond uh, $264,750 and East Coast paving 10% bid bond at $462,770.11. Um, motion of the Borough Council regarding the bids received for Washington Avenue sidewalk replacement of the Wheeling Lake Erie Road, Railroad and expanded limits. Uh, I believe there's going to be some discussion about this. We have to bring up this. Bring it up. Yes. Okay. Is there a motion first? I'll we'll make the motion at the second, and then we talk about the second. The second the motion would be why? Can I go with the most better? You want to have the option to make it accept the motion. Yeah, that's one of the motions. <coughs> I think the last one. Yeah, it's my. Delayed action. Where you could take, yeah, based upon uh, the recommendations. How long were they? For 60 days, 60 days. Yeah, I support delay. Yeah, it's, it's a very high number. We, could, we, could, you know, we obviously want to make sure we get these sidewalks fixed. Um, we're looking at possibly maybe changing the scope of the project to one side or, or and there's some things on the pipe we might go Yes. Help with the cost of that too. So. Any other comment, Pat? Well, I have a personal request. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it's still going to stand, but uh, that was nailed to a telephone pole <clears throat> next to the railroad crossing. And since it was directed to me, I would like to respond. Um, I see the problem. And I understand Council's reluctance to spend $109,000 of taxpayer money on fixing those particular sidewalks adjacent to the railroad overpass on Washington Avenue. That said, there are some spots that truly cry out for remediation. They are below the level of the sidewalk, of the roadway. In the winter, in the, in the summer, they are flooded. In the winter, they become ice. Um, in response to that, I think a more limited scope project would be reasonable. I would suggest that council look at what could be done in the price range of maybe $18,000, um, I, $15,000. I think that you may find that just those small pieces could be handled. The $109,000 is for both sides, am I correct? The, the $109,000 is for both sides underneath the railroad bridge, the overpass itself, and then it extends up across the area in front of Don Walsh's up to the corner of the building, which is also railroad property. The, the sidewalk there in front of Don Walsh's is below or even even with the elevation of the existing roadway, so the water has no place to go but to be trapped on that sidewalk. And I would agree with you, Pat, it's an icing problem, but I think that the way that we have this set up is in order to eliminate the icing problem, is to reestablish the sidewalk with a combination of curb and sidewalk to have a gutter line to keep the water within the roadway so that the water drains along Washington Avenue and gets into the existing uh, storm sewer system. The scope of the work also includes core joints and holes into the Jersey barriers on the one side where they don't exist so that any water that would be behind the sidewalks underneath the railroad overpass would have the ability to drain out into the road like it does on the other side of the road. The one thing that has occurred here with this cost, this cost is higher because uh, since Washington Avenue is a state road, Pembroke requires the work to be done at night. 
So all work has to be done between uh, 6 o'clock at night and 6 o'clock in the morning, which re results in a premium cost for that work for a contractor to come out here and have his guys out of work at night. And then, no, there's no waivers. And then plus they have to pay someone to be at the at, at the concrete plant to batch out the concrete at night. So we're at a disadvantage uh, from that perspective. If we were able to do the work during the daytime, I think you'd see a little cost. And when I put my cost estimate together, that was based on all the work being done during the daytime hours. Where's the responsibility lie with the railroad? Well, I don't I think that's a good question. And as I mentioned, and again, we We'll be in a position. I'm in. I'm, I'm having conversations with. I'm in conversations with the railroad right now. Let's say with with and if we can make it out, um, the patience of one cycle with these high bids in particular. We believe we're going to have information to bring back in and be able to have us have a, a more limited scope of work and perhaps we were just. Okay, so you're in conversation. I am. And I make a motion to table this until we hear something from the railroad. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Take that and be sure you Thank you very much. All right. Uh, planning Commission appointment. Uh, advertising took place on July 21st and 28th, requesting letters of interest from candidates wishing to build a uh, vacant seat on the Planning Commission with a term to the first Monday in January 2019. Uh, the following letters were received. Uh, you know, Mr. Petrusella Sr., Mary Weiss, and the Dean of Petrusella Sr. to serve, and Eric Schmidt. I want to make a nomination. Yes, Eric Schmidt. Is there a second? Um, I would like well, to... On nominations, you don't need a second. Anybody else can make Accept that the nature of a motion to appoint. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Mr. Schmidt. Is there a second? Okay. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to uh, for Nina Petroselli. And second. Okay. Um, before we have a vote, I'm going to say that we are going to be looking at the planning commission. We can add members. I am going to make sure that Eric Schmidt gets on the planning commission. No, and, 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 um, MPC does not actually provide for, expressly provide for alternate members <coughs> on the planning commission, but the planning commission can be between three and nine members. So you have a couple of members of orders, but you can wish a member to. authorized us to advertise an ordinance changing the membership level. You can make that motion second or whatever, but you could increase it to whatever number you wish. Okay. I will note that between six and seven, the quorum requirement would be the same. Right. So no harm in going up. Okay. Did that make a question? Yes. So there will be a question. Don't, don't do it on that. No, because you want to do it. This, no, this is something we personally want to be on planning commission on the planning commission tonight. We we have uh, our planning commission um, attendance is spotty sometimes, and this is something that we are looking to do. Yeah, we've been talking about this yeah. for the past six eight months is to to do something <coughs> to make make more people be a part of it to move on it. And as you said, with the up with all the stuff we have coming up as far as improvements and we need the planning commission to work with us uh, to, to do this. And I don't it's something that we've been talking about and uh, I don't want to lose you. So you guys have a question that we don't want to lose Eric Schmidt and uh, we made a motion for him. Why was there not a second? Well, just, just like we don't want to lose Eric, I 
the same feelings about me. That's the reason. I, I appreciate it. You know, I really do. I Springs the one year, and, uh, 
district attorneys of Powell said they do have like, uh, grants or whatnot, but they will put well, they were doing it in uh, uh, Clark, they put them up because they had gang problems or whatnot, and gang problems disappeared. Chartier's Park is a very, it's very isolated. There's no ball game down there. There's usually nobody down there, so it's it's tough. But cameras might help solve this problem because this has been going on for years. They uh, painted up the new men's room up there at school. I mean, I mean, it's just a, it's a shame. You know? We want to do things for our kids. I mean, my kids grew up in this town, and we built these parks for these kids and whatnot. And it's just it's still, I don't know if the things are getting worse these days or what. I mean, kids were bad back in the day, but uh, it just seems to be progressively worse. So we've got to look into maybe Chad gets back or the public safety committee or whatever. Maybe looking into putting some cameras around. And I know the police are strapped as far as patrolling and we're down there, but hopefully we can do something. I mean, it doesn't happen every day, but when it happens, it's a shame. So maybe if we catch a few of these people, we can do something about it. And uh, that's all I have for parks. Can I make a little note there? The Land Water Conservation Fund provided funding for Cook School Park and McLaughlin Park. And they do a site visit every five years. So they require um, that we maintain and keep up these parks. And if we, if they see something that is um, out of compliance, we get a letter and we have to bring it into compliance. In fact, um, at, at Cook School, we had already ordered a part, there was plywood down on the, uh, on the base, and we had already ordered a base for that, and uh, there were some spindles that were missing, and we had already ordered those, and we got a letter stating your spindles are missing and your base is, uh, you know, is cracked. And that piece itself, those two pieces were $1,700. And now we have to refabricate them because they don't fit the current, the, the, the current uh, equipment there. But they do do inspections every five years. Uh, they were at McLaughlin Park too. We had a broken um, bouncy seat, so we took that out. But um, we have to keep them up because we're, we're, you know, obtaining more money from the LWCO, from McLaughlin. So, um, you know, they, they, they keep an eye on their money and, and how you're using it and if you're keeping it up and everything's accessible. So. Uh, <clears throat> public Works. Yeah, I've heard all that is, is that our public works guys have been doing some repaving of alleys and that. They've been working on the alley between Harding and Coolidge. I think they got that finished uh, last week. And now they're up on Eisner, and they were down at the park fixing the lights and that for the parks and that. And uh, they've been working all around the town cleaning and, and cutting grass stones. That's all I have. Uh, public safety building out here. Uh, Mr. Mayor. First, with regards to uh, Mr. Pryor's uh, suggestion on trees, the idea might be a very spectacular entrance and might connect nicely with our present streetscape in the heart of our business district because of the width issues. So, something to look at, something to think about. Clearly, the the involvement of the existing property owners would be the key to that because it's not something that the borough would be directly involved. Other than that, uh, nothing else? No. Thank you. Uh, Police Chief Chaz, not here. Nothing did this. Mr. Solicitor. Uh, yes, you have my uh, written report. Uh, uh, picking up on you talking about parks and whatnot. Somebody mentioned the, uh, the Baldwin uh, planning as, uh, as well. If you recall, we had kind of the next progression or two mini kind of comprehensive plans going one on the Baldwin, the other up in the Coke School area. You're looking at ways to upgrade, update, uh, park, and all that kind of neighborhood atmosphere up in that area. And, I think it's worth the point now that we've kind of 
if you recall, I guess we, we, we mentioned it, kind of they come up with a viable plan, you kind of get a napkin sketch and then to finish the concept off and you fed it in terms of traffic circulation studies and, and whatnot. Um, it, it seems like you've coalesced on a potential concept, so if we take that out to kind of present a final <coughs> recommendation that this is something you'd like to present, probably appropriate to have us that, that engage and get a the traffic circulation study, see if what the potential concept is kind of works. Um, relatively smaller project, it's a professional service, and if you wish, we could want to expedite and have it done relatively quickly. Um, you could have us get a couple of quotes, we have to receive $5,000 uh, from a couple of offices. Um, and if you even want it, um, if, if the board was comfortable and wanted us to get in a position where we could get going, you, the council could have, say, a final selection from the at least two quotes that we would get uh, selected at the discretion of the council president. If you didn't if you wanted to have us get out and get it done in the store and get down the road or bring it back to your pleasure. All right. Go ahead. I'd make a motion for that. I'll oh, second. Boy, can I ask a question? Sure. As far as other oncoming projects we have coming up like next year, which are do we have the money right now to go for and do this stuff or we're gonna have to put it in the budget for next year? Well as far as as a, a traffic study, um, we have the money for that. Um, our because of projects that we did not have to do this year, we have money in the capital improvement fund to move forward with uh, a traffic study that would No, what I'm getting at is like, if we do the traffic study fine, but we don't necessarily have to do the project like... Right, we wouldn't have money no, to No, do in fact, we wouldn't feel comfortable recommending it's even a viable concept until we would have it. And we had talked previously, and it may have actually been before the wrong board, I apologize for you, where we had kind of anticipated once we kind of coalesced on a concept and you would have to go to get kind of beta testing before you brought it up. And the word that may actually earn you a bunch of person, but that would actually, this is kind of a soft part P because EPD kind of hit the napkin mm -hmm. and this would fall under the same, you know, the zoning study that we're actually engaged in. Right. So. Yeah. And I think that that would probably be um, something that we would look at grants for. <coughs> I have a question. What we're going to do is do a traffic study of the cool school area. Oh, that park area and the circulation and how that would work with what the concept was as far as upgrading the park area and whatnot. Okay. I understand that, but we're in the middle of construction on the other side of the border. So I don't know whether our, I don't know whether the traffic study is going to be valid at this point until you get well, the house is up there that, um, well, this is independent of all of that. Um, well, but it's still, we're looking at traffic coming through the area. And, uh, whatever that's going to be added to the traffic in the next But they already next, know, within they, the next they, year, so. they already know, you know, as far as I know how the traffic engineers work, they, they know what the well, you're going to tell me right now that we're going to trust the numbers that were put out there about the traffic no. coming from there? No. Don't hold on. That's actually not what I said at all. I said, oh, you said the traffic engineers already knew the number based on no, the number. The traffic number. engineer that we would engage to look at our neighborhood would also have the total number of the housing stock that goes into there and whatnot. And this is more of a micro thing within our side of the record. So. My, my only problem with it is, is I, I don't think the numbers would be correct at this point. I don't think it would be. Either. Matter of fact, it's pretty much guaranteed. Because you got construction traffic, whether it's pickup trucks and that versus this is a start, I beg pardon, I mean, back off. This is not like a strictly just this traffic study. It's a traffic and circulation study where the engineers kind of look at what Gus are maybe talking about going up in that neighborhood in terms of the park circulation and making they when they they're not they're not going on just doing like circulation you know traffic count is not like a traffic count study. This is the circulation study and traffic study based on. Um, post construction conditions that would occur. And again, this is not driven by the construction, this is driven by your, your, your planning of that neighborhood. I've been there, you're tweaking the way traffic would 
would circulate within that neighborhood. Yeah, we did the traffic study two two years ago or three years ago before we put the speed bumps in. So we have that traffic study already in place. Right, but that was not studying us looking at internal to that neighborhood and what would impact the micro circulation within in a lot of our neighborhood up on, on Cook School Road. That wasn't the purpose of that. That was a, that that actually I believe was kind of geared towards impact of that development on the existing conditions. Well that's the same as what this is because the bottom line is we want to travel to study how much traffic you have coming through that area. Yes, Jeff. May I suggest that we, we sit down and we develop a scope of what the study should be accomplished for the limits of the study before you go out and look up the proposals to do this work? Fair enough. Are we on the same page? Your apples down from the same page. Okay. Yeah. 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 That we sit down and we define the scope of the limits of what the study is supposed to be before anybody goes out and looks for proposals. You know, so we know what we're asking. So we know what we're asking. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Move on then. Okay. Uh, engineer sites. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, we covered quite a few of the items on the engineer's report. Um, I'll jump around here a little bit and we'll walk on part phase two. We're still waiting to get the word from the uh, BCNR through the Land and Water Conservation Fund uh, for that money. So uh, no agreement has been sent by them for that. The uh, Washington and James development, not the new report since the developer uh, backfilled the site and planted the grass in June. Uh, they made form, as I said last month, that they completed a chief technical core warrant and they plan on moving forward with the uh, development this fall. Uh, nothing new with the Chartreuse Street, Washington Avenue, and Chartreuse Street Bridge intersection. Uh, we're waiting for word from that. That, that grant happens to be uh, being run through South Bay X, so uh, keep in contact with Ryan over there. Yeah, What's that? our light is included in the uh, We approved the Holy Child Parish Center, uh, approved the came to uh, eight, or Alex Ferris. <laughs> And then the last thing we have is the uh, Bower Hill Road Geotechnical Investigation. I believe a copy of the report was provided to everybody uh, for the core points that were completed between the Union Avenue and the Block of Road. Um, I have uh, a preparer here, Matt Hayes here, if you have any questions. Uh, let me add one thing before we have any questions on it. I met with uh, representatives from People's Gas last week. And they've expe expressed a very strong desire to replace that main line on Bower Hill Road between Union and McLaughlin Run Road. Okay, so I was out there probably uh, three weeks ago paying up the limits. We smelled a very strong odor of gas. My bill has <coughs> expressed a long time the smell of gas over there. So I uh, met with the gentleman last week and uh, said they want to move forward. They're trying to get a cost estimate put together, get the budget numbers, and they're supposed to get back to me by the end of the week. The line that's there right now was installed in 1890. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got, they got a good uh, investment on their capital. Where's where that located? Do you know exactly where it's located? It's, 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 it's on the inner lane, Neil. Okay. Close to the hillside. Close to the hillside. Okay. So, 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 so they replaced that. That involves since the coast yeah. service. Yes, I did talk to them about to make it do a participation to military service and not one layer of the roadway that broke the land that we worked on. How long is the time? 600 feet. So, do a plus for us. So, we'll take the one you think we would have to do a plus for us. I don't see it. We have kids out there. I mean, we have. Our bids are already approved. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We won't work with the with construction until they. And I've already yeah. talked to them. Uh, they'd like to use our contractor to do the work, so they don't have to go searching for another contractor. And I've, I've already talked with Tia Robinson. Tom Robinson okay. said, "Sure, we're glad to entertain doing the work for them." Is there any sort of time frame they have on this? They want to be done. Within the next two to three weeks, with the with the uh, gas line replacement, right now. <laughs> like right now. There are the, what what helps with it, Neil, is there's no services between the limits of where they want to do. Mm -hmm. Services are usually what slows down the. It's, it's a straight shot. shot. It's a straight yeah. shot from end to end. They're going to do a little bit of work in the intersection of Union there by Silhall. I told the gentleman, if you do 
that, you're going to go from curve to curve, a pre-specified length, trying to talk him into stripping out that little bit of concrete that's left over there, and uh, help us out. In, in layman's terms, when I read your report, <laughs> We're getting groundwater underneath the pavement is the road next to us. Is that basically what it is, the groundwater that's eroding underneath? I think Matt didn't answer the question better than I can as he was the one who was. Yeah. So that was going to be one of my questions. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah, so in layman's terms, what do we have to do to rectify that? Um, so we yeah, so this in layman's terms, it's kind of a combination of a lot of things, but the, the main idea is it's a road that, um, if you were to go and build a road today, it doesn't have all the elements of a quality road. And the key thing is that curve and that, sub, that drainage on either side. You have that drainage on either side of a road, any water that wants to come in, either from the surface, over a curb, through a curb, or from groundwater from outside of the roadway, doesn't get to the soil or the base aggregate underneath the pavement to affect it. So because uh, there has been some reconstruction effort in the eastbound lane on the retaining wall side, it's in pretty good shape um, for the most part, but on that westbound side where that cut slope is, you have groundwater that comes in from that rock outcrop, you have curb that's probably 58 years old that's at or below grade to the axle. <coughs> so there's no good break and also below that there's no subsurface drainage to pick up any of that groundwater and keep it from going underneath that pavement. So what so, we do is we're proposed to add an under drain on the on the cut side of the road, when we do the road through work, through working to pick up that water. I already had under drain included in the uh, repair work. Okay. We're going to extend those loans. Okay. I guess I'm so somewhat curious why we didn't do that three years ago. We didn't have a water problem at that time, Neil. That there was, was, well, there was I find that hard to believe when yeah. your engineer here just stated that the curb's 50 years old. Underneath, so you're saying this happened in the last three years? I would have to say that because you know, the one we did proof roll that road before we paid it, we were in a loaded truck <coughs> up and down there. There was no appreciable movement, there was no evidence of any water visible at that time. Were you involved in that one? No, no, it wasn't the case. Either. I've only lived here 30 years and uh, I've been driving by a railroad for that period of time. That particular problem, I didn't notice when it started cropping up because to do that work, it was in the last four or five years. It wasn't in all those previous years. Something happened in the last four or five years. I mean, I've lived in this area my whole life, too, not in Bridgeville, but in Bethel Park, and I can certainly remember Valerie Road being a nightmare for quite a period of time. Matter of fact, I can remember it being nice for far less time than I can remember it being bad. Is there anybody else here that recalls that as well? I don't remember Bower Hill being a convenient road to drive down for a long time, a very long time. I don't remember it being that bad. I don't remember we ever getting any complaints regarding that. It's been following. I mean, you know, when we had that big blizzard that knocked out, I mean, it was probably like eight, nine years ago. That road was a nightmare. They couldn't even, they couldn't even plow it. I pointed out something here about the condition of the road and that something has changed in the last four years. If something has changed in the last four years, it, if the event that occurred was we re, we repaved and reinstalled the road. So we disturbed either, something. Well, if we disturb it, it's our issue that we broke it. Now, how did we break it in 2013 when we did this job? It's just as valid a question as why didn't we? fix it in 2013 when we did this job. Either way, this road was done in 2013 and it now needs redone. My son something. For about three months, the road was great. Yeah, yeah, about three months. So that was yeah. that, that was and then it started. And then it started again. So something that happened in 2013. Well, something happened that should have been known in 2013. It either should have been known or something that should have been fixed. One of the other. One of those two things. Because clearly it shouldn't be three months that you have a lot of the road.
But here's the theory. You face the free handy wall, like you said, right? You feel the curve up. So now that water's trying to pull me. It's not going over to the break for the broken wall anymore. Now it's stuck. How, how, then we should have done X. Yeah. Whatever we, it's, it's a very narrow question. I still believe we have. We've got a problem there. Or we had a problem in 2013 that we did not address properly. Now, if we can't, if, if we can't at least, as an organization, look at that and say that we did and admit it, then we'll never be able to get past it. Is it possible that it just finally broke? It's possible that it broke. I mean, I think one one thing that I mean, not only not the road break, but the final the the, the the rock the rock in there could have broke. You know, there's a lot of shale there that could have uh, a fissure or something could have let loose on there. We've had a lot more traffic, I think, on Bower Hill Road mm -hmm. since 2013. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were using Bower Hill Road as an alternative when there was other construction going on in the area as far as Valley Hill Road and Peters Township. People were coming down there rather than going other ways. You know. One thing I've noticed that in 2013 14, they did McMurray Road from 19 up uh, to like Ellis Cafe, they run big on. All that road is in the exact same condition yeah. along the hillside. It's it's all it's all sinking. So whether because we with the frost line that went down into the ground that hasn't done that for probably 15, 20 years, then two years ago we had the real bad when we stayed down in round zero for a week and a week and a half, our frost line goes down in and our frost line hasn't been down that far. So if you got water down in there and then you start the Erosion of the ground underneath once it starts to fall, then that creates the problem. So I've been looking at other streets because I agree with you guys. I mean, whether we've been we've been trying to come up with that solution. That's why we agreed to have the core uh, drilling done in that, so we can find a solution to what the problem is. Whether it's we broke it or whatever, we want the solution and fix it moving forward. Uh, we, if the gas company is willing to go in there and do that. Because they're going to disturb it all. They're going to disturb it all. So everything that we're hoping they could end up disturbing it all and blowing that out. To well, they might find it. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, uh, the nature of the of the defects in the road now are somewhat concentrated around where those utility lines are. Is that part of what your report is. In, yeah, in a lot of areas, yes, but. And on the other hand, we also found, we, we did core borings in areas where we found limestone bedrock mm -hmm. within a foot of the pavement, and there were still pavement distresses. So it was, mm -hmm. it was and then we did some borings, I think one boring <coughs> eastbound lane mm -hmm. uh, that had shown no issues on the surface, and it wasn't the best old fill material. Mm -hmm. So it, it like I said, there wasn't one thing that you can easily point to and say, this is the issue, we need to go in there and fix this, or it's because of what happened in 2013 or in 2004 or whenever. It was all over the place. And really it just comes down to, if you take a step back and look at it, at least from my perspective, from what you would typically see on a roadway, and the distresses I was seeing in it, and the information you were getting back from the core borings, it's just groundwater's getting in there, and the only place that it can get in there, if you have a firm pavement with no cracks, is from the sides. And the only weak side is that side where you have exposed rock above, you have a curve that's at or below grade, um, and you have spring boxes that some of the tar around the ceiling is kind of being redone. So there are pathways for water to get in there, whether it's on a hot summer day or if it's in one of those freeze cloud days in the middle of the January. You have you have that ledge, that that limestone outcropping, that's almost under the entire lane in sections. For for the most part. That that limestone, uh, we did not encounter it at shallow depths in all the warrants. And that's likely attributed to the utility trenches as well. So you can look at it from one perspective to where, okay, perhaps if there wasn't those trenches in there, you're counting the storm, you're counting the gas, and you're also counting the, the communication of the barometer line. Well, perhaps that limestone uh, bedrock would still be there, but that's not necessarily the case because 
it kind of meanders and we were nobody was here when they first put it in. So it's it's difficult to know without exhuming everything and seeing it firsthand um, what is natural and what was caused by fire destruction. But as far as what we could see from the work that we did, that shallow limestone does not exist in all locations where we so so that shallow limestone we found in areas where there were famous destructions, yet we also found it where there weren't. So and, you find, and you find the asphalt, the, the road surface, being far, far less, only what, three tenths of a foot instead of a full foot in think, those areas. Yeah, I think there was in one or two spots, it was like that with the shallow limestone. Um, uh, from a pavement perspective, it, you can look at it two ways. You have one that is a thin section or thinner than typical, but then you also have a bedrock beneath it. Um, on the other hand, you got a whole geometry in, in the surface, or else you get bird baths or what have you. Well, but one of the things you're, you're pointing out is even with, with the uh, solid base of the limestone, yeah. the, net, the, the shallower road surface is still allowing for for deterioration. So I ask the question: Wouldn't the sh wouldn't the lack of asphalt, the shallow road surface, be a contributing factor to this problem? And in, in did we get a bad job from whoever put it in three years ago, who maybe skimped on our road surface and put in three tenths of a foot in some sections instead of a full foot? Well, Pat, Pat that was just a mill and paint. It was just a mill and paint. Uh, it was not a reconstruction, so there was not supposed to be a foot of asphalt installed. Okay. So they milled down two or three inches. We milled off three inches and we put three inches uh -huh. back on. That's all we did. And that, so I, I, it's, it's a very highly trafficked road with lots of tractor trailers going down it. I just kind of just seems peculiar to me that that's what we would have done at that time. Then we do it every day. We do it on Route 19. We do it on Route 88. And it's, they just didn't walk in the same way. That's all. Yeah. all they did was really yeah. 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 But I, you know, the other piece of that roadway, as, as Neil was pointing out, it is a regional roadway. <coughs> and we have to, I would hope that we continue our efforts. But if I'm correct, was a past council's decision to take on well, the state. Did they file that again? No. No. Let's, Mary Wise was instrumental in looking at this. And it takes a bit, it's good to put it on the table now. Okay. We have looked, Nino looked, lots of people have looked. Lori spent hours looking, didn't you, in old minutes to find out when yeah, that section of the Walkland Road was turned Every back, minute. was taken back. The point Wait, to what council did it. And what we found, figured out is Bridgeville was born with it. That's right. In 1901, Bridgeville was created. That was part of the road that was Painter's Run on the map at the Historical Society. The portion of what is now Bowery Hill Road from Washington Avenue. There was no Bowery Hill Road. That's correct. There was no Bowery Hill Road at that time. That is correct. That physical piece was named something different. Well, from the railroad tracks on. The railroad so tracks. S and Lane. S and Lane. Right. Okay. Part of original Bridgeville. It wasn't that we took it back from the from the county. It was ours to begin Wait with. Wait a minute. Everything on the right hand side of mm -hmm. the walk and run itself. Everything on the right hand side coming into town. It was Upper St. Clair's. Was Upper St. Clair's. And we until 1950. Uh, right, and when because we, they couldn't give the people water and sanitary or sewer lines, so they gave us the whole, the whole thing. They gave us the whole thing. <laughs> so some question has been brought up about the the fact that there's an Allegheny County Works project that did the bridge, the small bridge that takes Bowery Hill over McLaughlin, was an Allegheny County Works project. But just as some of our parks and some of our projects now have been done with federal money, hark back to the history of the Great Depression, those programs were administered by the county and that's why the county's plaque is on the bridge. The county has told us that the bridge is ours, Lori? 
I'm trying to remember that. No, theirs. Theirs? But the road is not. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But the road is not. It's but not the road is not. <laughs> not uncommon at all for what Tommy or another just yes. out of the bridge. The, the, the point is that it is council's expressed wish to turn this to turn Bower Hill Road from Washington Avenue to Painter's Run or to, to Mountain Valley <coughs> to Penn And hopefully one day that will occur. But well, we did make that motion. Yes, that's why I say it's council's express wish, because council made the motion and it passed unanimously. Right. So it's not, not me saying it, it's you. Um, having said all of that, the, Nick, you, the wall that is at McLaughlin Run, um, you did not mention it. It's not part of your report, but you had some thoughts. I, I'm, what yeah, are your thoughts from, regarding it? Um, I know observations just from being out there. Uh, what's the sort of be part of the scope and talking to Joe Sykes? We just left it just to the pavement because it seems to be a whole other issue. Um, looks like the original wall in terms of the WPA work mm -hmm. the county administered 70, almost 100 years ago now. Um, it does have significant stresses. It does appear to be leaning towards the stream, which is not a natural thing for a wall to do necessarily in good standing. Um, it does appear to have some fresh cracks in it, whether it's from a traffic accident, an impact, or if it's just from further distress to it, from age. But it's, uh, that wall does not appear to be in the best shape. Given these pieces, I would suggest to Council that this is a notice to add a larger project is in order. Not tomorrow, but sometime in the next... Call you tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I probably will call you tomorrow. So, that's, that's all part of what we're looking at. Hey, all the that's, thank you, that's exactly what I was alluding to. In, in the drawings for the future of Baldwin Street is moving the creek over more towards Baldwin Street taking the stress off of Mario Road, even closing a portion of Mario Road and rerouting Mario Road down through Baldwin Street. That's all part of the future plans of what we're looking at because of that. Excellent. So where are we working? He may have any more questions for him. He may have any more for us. Let's get out of here. <laughs> 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 Uh, Fire Chief, we'll show you up. Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, you have my report from the last two months. We had our system fixed, and I had to read everything that's on it as far as that. Uh, a couple things for you. One, again, as we've been saying, we've been using the Haas, and you see there's a simulator put up on the roof that we use. We built on the roof of the actual Haas that we use to train the couples in, so we don't have that kind of holding. The other thing I have, I have a, on July 14th is a Thursday night was our training night. And I want to make council aware of this. Uh, Lori knows about it. We were training one night down the station, uh, working with the ladder truck, doing some flowing with water and that. And when we do this down there at our station, we shut the road down because we're using high marshes across the street. <clears throat> But we leave the traffic open to go around our station so when people have to go to the storage place, they still have access to their storage. They're not cut off completely from getting to their place. Our neighbor that owns the storage place has a real issue with us. And we do not know why, he will not say. And that night he came and said a few truest words about some of my members that weren't nice. He also asked if we had a permit to shut the road down and who authorized to squirt water into the Sill Hall's parking lot, which is what we were doing. And that is not an issue because I have connections with that. And the owner knows. But the man, some of the stuff he said in that, we filed a report on it, but this stuff this does not stop with him when we're trying to train down there. And we just want to make you aware that this guy is complaining. We've 
from doing cars when we catch cars down there cut up. He complains about us having the cars down there. So he's a very unhappy person. And he's very unhappy with the people next to him too, which is the pallet company. They have the same problem. So we just want to make you aware that we try to keep the place open for people to get to his place and we also people ask us about it. We don't say nothing bad. I mean, we even let the people, when they're moving in, they park their big trucks in our parking lot. Which they should not be because our lot's not set up for it. But this man's going to mock us for everything we do down there. You know, we can shut our parking lot and have our vehicles towed if we want. It just, enough, we're, we've had enough. And he won't give us an answer why he has an issue with us. There's one on every street. Yes, there is. We just, we just keep going. And the thing is, we just keep going. You know, when problems happen up, I make more aware because she's going to get an email. I get very quickly. Yeah. I mean, he's even gone to police years ago with the former chief when he was trading down here. Called the police on the police training down here. <laughs> I mean, it just, we don't know what this problem is, but we're trying to train to protect the community, and this guy, and that's the perfect place down there. There's no traffic, there's no way bothers you, but we keep it so that people can get around to still get to their stuff, but it's only him. They don't want your house. He's So, we as the fire department are making you aware that there's an issue going on. He keeps starting to come here, and again, you see he's not here. So, I don't want to be there. He is not. So, and then yesterday we had our open house. It was very nice. Uh, we're going to keep doing that, but we're going to be moving it to Fire Prevention Week in October, starting next year. Can't do it this year. We got some classes going on. So, but that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Uh, South Bridge EMS Dan Miller. Um, I did give Lori an electronic version of our stats for the last three months. We get caught up. I apologize for falling behind on that. Um, and other than that, we got some good news. We were able to acquire an assistance to the fire fire grant, an AFT grant. We've got $90,000 to buy new heart monitors. So we're in the process of getting four you know, fully loaded top end heart monitors. So we hope to fully purchase them soon. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. Uh, I saw Becky here. But they're coming in still here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't, I'm going to say that you saved the best for last, um, nice. or near last, because I'm not last. I do want to thank um, Council for appointing Bert Cherry to fill the vacancy seat of the late Councilman William Colucci. I much admire Bert Cherry. Um, I'm here just to report about the library. Right now we're sharing our library with South Fayette because they had a backup sewer problem and we had the rain, the heavy rain, approximately two or three weeks ago. And they're going to be sharing our library space for probably till September. Um, and have we have their staff and our staff working together. So if you're in the library, um, you might see some new faces. And everybody's getting along, and it's working out just wonderfully. Um, we've been able to have facilitate meetings of mental health support, uh, the Barber National Institute job, of Job Recruitment, Free Rivers Romance Writers Guild, and the APLA Western Region Directors Meeting. And I just tell you that because um, locally we do have the Chartreuse Custom Pet Creation um, and we did have a bridal shower there. So the community is utilizing the space and we hope to have more involvement where we can provide that space and that opportunity and we thank you very much. Um, I provided a report and I haven't done any kind of questions. The only thing I wanted to comment on was today I received an email and I did get a call from Penda that the bridge um, by the walk of our park, the weight limit was going to be reduced to 28 tons except for 36 ton combinations. So uh, I know I got a call from so long that um, they had heard that this was going to be happening. So. Apparently, um, it is in place, and uh, it is because the substructure and 
We have to apply for a permit just to let you know for that. What's that? They called me also on it and told me that we have to apply a permit. To How much is the truck weigh? The truck's about 75,000. It's way over. That's the only truck we have to do it on because we do assist Secretary and Ad with our commercial end on there. Black Tiller. And they do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're, they're also applying so they can come into the town without any issues. That's just to protect both departments is all it is. It's an easy thing to they'll stop it. Uh, new business. Uh, we need to pass a motion for department leaders. Motion to uh, amend the ordinance to authorize the addition of two meters of locations in the Cato region. Favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Um, any other business? Yeah, I got something. There's something that in Lori's report about uh, the borough looking at the appearance of the borough building itself. The aluminum thing over the shot, concrete on this side, bad. I guess next year we're going to look into fixing that. There's something of very, I think, very great importance. It's so it's silly. But Carpeting in the administrative offices. There's a tripping hazard. It's been here since the fire department moved out. I don't know how many years ago? 20 years. 20 years. I mean, I've tripped over a lot of but I see the person that we've looked for a while. Because there's, there's humps in the carpeting. God knows if we're going to sand. We just keep putting the rugs on top of it so we don't trip on it. So. I don't think it's a major bunch of terms. At least, like in the either putting bars yeah. down or new carpeting. Someone's going to get us together in the theory. I'll make a motion yeah. to make it to get some quotes to you guys figure out what you guys want in your office. Well, we probably, because um, as far as um, building, as far as the building budget goes, we don't have money in there now. But I guess if we could get quotes uh, together so that. One more. Anybody else have any business? Issue to try and do it during daylight hours. 
we saw that with the, with the uh, geotechnical sort of trying to do it. Thank <laughs> you. 